What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of our podcast, Knowledge Boner Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Wally Wen. And today we have a very uh, interesting topic that I think we could fucking go on probably forever. It's probably gonna be a long day today uh, discussing this. But we're gonna talk about, um, you know, when you should start a business and why you shouldn't start a business and et cetera. And, and, you know, while I can attest to this, we had to learn this shit the hard way. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. We're going to be completely honest with you. Um, I mean, shit, we've invested, I mean, gosh, a lot of money into courses and, and programs. I mean, you, you've, you've invested in a lot of shit too, right, Wally? Oh yeah, absolutely. I bought, I bought, I can't tell you how many things I've bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, if you are, if you are trying to, you know, maybe you're at a point in life right now where, you know, you're employed and you're just thinking like, like shit, I need like a side hustle. Um, you know, speaking of which, you know, I'll kind of just share with everybody a story. Um, I'm not going to mention any names. I don't want to get butt hurt, but you know, someone in my family reached out to me recently, um, a few weeks ago and was like, Hey, you know, I need to start, I need, I need something like I'm in debt. I need, I need to do something on the side. You know, you're always, you're always doing these things. I need kind of a side hustle and want to do like retail arbitrage. And, you know, for those listening, if you know what retail arbitrage is, is if you buy, sell, and you, you, you buy low and you sell high, right? Well, in my head, I'm thinking like, well, shit, like there's a lot of fucking <laughs> skills that goes into rebel, retail arbitrage. And if you're somebody that's just working a nine to five job uh, and you're just employed, um, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of shit you have to learn. And, and people like me and Wally, like we love learning. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and be very fucking clear on that. So that's why entrepreneurship is for us. Like, you know, Wally, we were just talking about this earlier. I mean, Wally, your rate of like consuming books and absorbing it. Why don't you tell them about that? Like, it's fucking insane. Like, like, dude. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I I, I crush books. Like, like, I, I literally I'll buy them. So like, you know, everybody sees that free book offer on the internet. So most of these influencers now, they're obviously coming out with free books to kind of give people content, like an intro to them, you know? So I'll like buy their books and I'll like literally, I'll read them in, in a day or two days, like once I get them. And it really doesn't matter the size of the book either. It's just, you know, it depends on how interesting the content is, right? Like, you know, like I picked up uh, what Ping Jun's content multiplier formula, which is like a 70 page book. And I read it in 25 minutes. But yeah. now like, but now like I have an idea of how we should, you know, do content and stuff. So so that was totally worth it. Like I, I, I wouldn't trade that 25 minutes for anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So like, you know, if you're thinking about starting business or a side hustle, let me get back to that story. So, you know, first of all, so some of my family wanted to do retail arbitrage. Okay. And then was asking me for advice and I was like, okay, well, there's a lot of skills that go into that. I recommend that you do X, Y, Z. I was like, you know what? Why don't you find, uh, and this isn't coming from me guys. I read all the books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad talks about this shit. Okay. There's skills that's involved that you have to have before you do anything. It should never be about money. It should always be about skills. And the first thing that even Robert Kiyosaki says is, you know, join a network marketing company. Never done network marketing. You know, like, Oh, but God, so those fucking pyramid schemes and blah, blah, blah. Like, like shut the fuck up. Like look at it like a business and just realize that if you are completely new to business, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like you have to start somewhere. Okay. So just approach it with the business mindset and realize like, I'm only doing this, not for the sake of making money, but I'm doing this just so I can learn some kind of skill sets, working with other people, networking, you know, developing sales skills. Like if you can't have that mentality, then you shouldn't be getting business in the first place. So that's what I said to my family member. And then like, well, I don't want to do anything. I don't want sales. I don't want to do anything that involves networking. Uh, I don't want anything that's going to take too much time. Um, and, and, and that's what I go on. So in my head, I'm thinking, so you want a fucking unicorn business that doesn't exist. Like Mm -hmm. you want, you want, you want a side hustle that involves like not talking to people that doesn't do sales. And guys, if you're trying to get in business and you're, you're, you know, a job right now, like sales is fucking everything. Like sales is like, if you, I don't give a shit if you work customer service at, um, Walgreens. Okay. If you're behind the desk at Walgreens, like, and and people are coming up to you and you're asking advice, like you're selling fucking something. Like people have this bad taste in their mouth about sales and sales is what it is, is, you know, Brunson says it the best, you know? Sales and entrepreneurs, like salespeople, like they're the ones that change the world. And, and, and that's like the biggest key and, and takeaway. So before you even do anything, you got to realize, you got to look at, okay, what's my mindset? And, and I think, you know, now me and Wally, we're, we're not, you know, blown up uh, entrepreneurs or anything like that. Um, you know, where we're like, you know, these fucking gurus online, like, oh, look at us. We're making seven figures a month or six figures a month and all this shit, right? We're not there yet. But I can tell you, that we're at the point where we're willing to learn and absorb information, right? 
We're like constantly learning. We're constantly learning new things. Uh, but our mindset is already there. So, you know, why don't you kind of dive into like the importance of that, Wally? Because what, what, what I remember back in the day when I was even fascinated about reading books and entrepreneurship is, is I was like, shit, there's no opportunities out there. Like, right. I was overwhelmed with it. I was stressed out. I was like, how the hell are people making mm-hmm, money? Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then later, as you know, when you start reading books and you start learning shit, like it flip flops, right? Like all of a sudden mm-hmm. there's a, there's a fuck ton of opportunities out there and it's so overwhelming and each one requires different mm-hmm. skill sets. Right. So I want you to kind of talk mm-hmm. about like why it's important. Like first and foremost, if you're going to start a business, like why your mind has to be right before you can even dive into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. So well, I, I guess I'll tell a little bit about myself. So just to kind of give you guys a uh, like indication of like what, what I was like my mental state of like before I started the entrepreneurship journey. So um, and Dylan knows this about me, but he didn't know this about me at first. But, you know, actually, I was a drug dealer. So uh, so, I, you know, I, I, you know, I went to jail and all that stuff. So don't worry about like looking me up and being like, oh, we're writing them out. Like I already did my time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, hey, uh, hey, hey, Gary so, V says that drug dealers are the purest form of entrepreneurs, man. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, and, and it's pretty interesting that he says that. But, but you know, I mean, that's pretty much was my my first response to making money in general. So, you know, I used to work in restaurants and stuff before that, before I started doing that kind of work. And then I was like, well, what, there's people making money out there somehow or another. And I just happened to come, I just happened to be introduced to somebody that you know was in that line of work, and he made a crap ton of money. So I was like, mm-hmm. that looks like something I want to I want to do. So that was kind of how I got introduced to making money, I, you know, ideally in the beginning with. And obviously I got in trouble. And so then progressing forward, you know, I was kind of forced into the mindset of entrepreneurship. You know, you know, whenever you, you go and do legal struggles like that and you go through the system, like obviously that stays on your record. Right. So nobody's going to hire you. Like they, they say that, you know, when you have felonies, that's, you know, and, you know, nobody wants to hire you. It's true. Like no one's hire you. So you're pretty much forced into the entrepreneurship journey. And that's kind of where I, you know, that's kind of where I, where I had to start, you know, I was like, you know what, like, I, there's no way that I'm going to be able to build a successful life or, or any kind of remotely what I wanted in the, in the normal line of work now. So I have to, so this is it. Like, so let's talk about, let's, let's like, dive into that for a second. So, so you, what were you doing at the time? Were you, were you already in school at that point? Whenever you started that? Uh, started, started what exactly? You, the, the you know, I, I'm becoming a badass drug warlord. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was in school. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was, I was in second year of, of college. I was a sophomore. Okay, so and and so when you were introduced to that, right? Like, so did you just kind of did you just dive into it, or did you like at first did you know like did your mind go at all like okay is it even possible to make money with this? Like, did you already see people before you got into it like just being successful uh, with it? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, it was. I saw obviously I know this guy and he was already like you know, like people, obviously when you work in the service industry, everybody does drugs. They do something like Mm -hmm. the one of them guys, they either drink, they smoke weed, whatever the case may be. It's something right. They have a vice. So, so, you know, being in that kind of, in that realm of the world, that's, that's, you know, that's where a lot of clientele for that line of work is right. The, the restaurant industry, because it's fast money, they have cash, that kind of stuff. Anyway. So, um, so that was really my first indicator. That was like my first lesson. And that's what I realized is like, I was like, okay, like, like people, like the target audience, right? The mm-hmm. target is like, is like people that can make fast cash. So it's like, okay, like that makes sense. And, uh, and so, yeah, I definitely agree that you had to develop a skill set of some kind though. Cause you know, obviously when I first started, like, I didn't know what the hell to do, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, I was in debt, you know, like, you know, basically the situation happened to me where I owed somebody some money, blah, blah, blah. And so I was having to overcome debt to someone and also like you know overcome my situation but when you first start anything like, you have no you have no idea what the heck you're doing right like like i didn't know what to do like i was like okay do i go call someone do do i you know do i go knock on doors like you mm-hmm. know what i mean like it was literally like that so i definitely see the point like, and so i had to develop that skill um you know like networking right so it was like okay now okay i have to go out and meet people somehow okay so how do you do that? You have to go like, you know, okay, call your friends first. Okay. Your friends will, you know, recommend and that kind of stuff. And that's just kind of how you build mm-hmm. in general. So yes, definitely you have to learn skills 100%, like something, like there's no way you're going to walk into anything and not have to learn something. Yeah. So let's talk about like, uh, you know, it, it from tons of people have followed stuff in the past. Right. And, and this is definitely a mistake that I know uh, I made in the beginning that a lot of listeners you know, I mean, fuck, you're probably not even want to hear this shit. But I, I really don't care. Like if you're just now getting entrepreneurship, right. And you're kind of, you have shiny object syndrome. Okay. You're, you may be looking like, oh, like everyone's into like Shopify and drop shipping and e-commerce and, 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 you know, that's kind of like on the rise, like it's hot and everyone wants to get in like with zero skills. They wouldn't just dive into that shit. Right. 
And then come mm-hmm. to find out they're struggling through that. You know, I was one of those people too, right? You come to find out like, okay, there's a lot more skills that need to be involved with this. And then when you talk to people that know what they're talking about, you know, that have been doing this for years, you know, they, they're, they're honest with you. They're like, look, I was already in a position of business where like I had a high income skill coming in, right? Like I already had the experience. And then when I did this, it was just kind of adding to my plate. But so people see the, these, these things like e-commerce and they're low profit margins. So that, that's the problem. If you're, if you're just now interested in getting into the business and you're going to tr- start with something like arbitrage or e-commerce, you got to realize that those skills that are involved um, over time for mass volume is, yeah, it's beneficial. But until you have those skills, you don't want to start with low margins. So for you, when you started that in the, you know, the drug business, like what kind of margins were you, were you pulling? Like were they, were they high or were they low or mm-hmm. what? Yeah, so that's hilarious that, that we're going to talk about this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so margins were it depends on depends on your volume, right? So mm-hmm. depending on what like what volume you were you were pushing is is your margin. So obviously, the smallest increment is typically the the largest. So meaning like you know, <laughs> without breaking it down too much <laughs> and giving people like <laughs> tactics, right? But the smallest that's the basic concept is the smallest amount you can charge you can have the most margin on. But as you give somebody more quantity you obviously have to, you know, cut them a rate or cut them a discount or some kind or, or whatever. And I do not condone anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do not, do not listen or... to this. Do not. Li- oh my gosh. I just listened to episode two of knowledge boner podcast. And I know exactly how to fucking start my own drug business. That is not the point of this guys. Like, you know, um, you know, but, but you will learn, you know, if you could do something, you know, Wally's at the point now where he's just like, okay, shit, you know, I, I've done it before. Like, like that was an entrepreneur revenue, you know, revenue stream. Um, but it just wasn't like legal and ethical. Right. So now Wally's mindset is like, well, shit, if I could do that then, and there are people doing it ethically and morally, like what the fuck are they doing? You know, well, that's... mostly for me, it's like, it's like, you know, they, they take everything away from you, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you get in trouble, so that's what's like, for me, it was like, okay, like what, what can I build that they can't take away from me? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Or that nobody can take away from me. It's mine, hundred percent. So, yeah, you know, definitely. Um, but yeah, so like as I was like build into you know like getting these skills and stuff, but like I, I definitely agree with the point you just made a second ago. Uh, not not to like kind of cut off your your point, but um, but you know these guys they they'll have a nine to five right, and then they'll see this ad that's like oh you know how I made ten k drop shipping right. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to learn how to drop ship. So then, you know, these guys are like, oh, they'll see this story like of this guy and be like, you know, he'll tell them about how he quit his job in like a month or two months. And, you know, this, this super like, you know, fantasy story about how this guy just like popped off all of a sudden. Right. And, and drop shipping was like the magical cure. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the crazy thing is these guys with nine to fives, I've never done anything on the internet before, never done any kind of digital marketing, had never looked at marketing, never done Facebook ad, never done anything like developed any kind of skill set in that realm. will say, Oh, well, drop shipping is the answer. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to buy this course and that's going to be okay. Like, no, 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 <laughs> you should not do that. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Like he, and that was, you know, we're, we're at a point where we're just so accustomed to, you know, like I said, meanwhile, we felt like we tried multiple things. We felt a lot, but you know, that's why we're kind of um, getting some traction and stuff now because we've learned something from all those things, but we're like literally mentally, I guess, prepared and kind of numb to it. So it's like if me and Wally were to lose everything we have right now and literally have to start from zero, like we wouldn't be, I mean, like it is okay, whatever. Right. I mean, we, you know, Wally, me shit. Why don't you tell them about, tell them about recently the struggles of um, you know, what happened past month about, uh, you know, you, you having to bounce from place to place and, and you move into Texas. Just give them the brief synopsis of that. Oh, yeah. So, so well, it's been a little, it's been a few months now, but just the brief synopsis is, you know, the, the company that I had been building with, uh, with, well, with my old partner, you know, it happened to crash and burn or people pulled out, whatever. So I, I basically pulled my stake out of that. But, you know, as a contingency of me working in that program or working in that, in that company, I'm sorry, you know, that, that was my living situation, right? So, so basically what happened to me is, you know, I basically got ejected from that house and then proceeded to be ejected out of four more homes uh, <laughs> within, within that month and then eventually ended up so, and where I am now in, uh, in Texas, uh, in a more stable location. But, but that's just to say that, you know, like that's, you know, most people, whenever something like that, you know, occurs for them, it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw in the towel and it's kind of over. But, but, you know, for me, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm very, I'm very optimistic in the sense of like, you know, I realize that 
that shit happens to people. You know what I mean? Like it just happens and you just got to like continue on. And I guess that, that kind of le- like segues into the next point that, that we want to talk about. And that was, uh, you know, Dylan, what do you think is like the, the, the most important thing they should build, you know, before they start building a business, you know, you like, as far as like the mindset and things that they should uh, focus on. Well, you know, it, and the one thing I'm really coming to learning with that is it, it on mindset and, and, and what you should build is definitely you want one skill that of course that is valuable, right? It, you know, what I mean valuable is like this one thing you're doing, whether you're, you're, you're building a job, working nine to five, whatever it is, um, is going to create you uh, a significant income on the side. Okay. And like, so you have income to support yourself, but your mindset literally does like, I, 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 I can't stress this enough. Like when I, see, when I see people that have never like struggled before, cause you know why, like we, we, we fucking struggle, like, and we're immune mm-hmm. to that shit. But when I see people that are like, Oh, like I've, I've, you know, I'm gonna start a business, blah, blah, blah. But they're very like panicky and they're, they're like terrified of fucking failure. They're terrified of, of doing shit wrong. And in my head, it's just like, I, I like, I just want to reach out and be like, don't do it. Like you're not there yet. Like you have to be at the point in your mind where like, it's just like you understand that a, it's possible to be successful so what I would recommend anyone do is get your head right and realize, okay, if your brain, this is what everyone, everyone I know that has made at least seven figures are like, I could not get to the seven figure mark until I literally believed it before I was there. Like, that's the biggest thing that was holding them back. Everyone talks about, you know, we, we just saw, you know, someone recently on a call, you know, while he was talking about like, you know, uh, um, their, their dream car, you know, um, mm-hmm. well, uh, a, a very successful person that we follow now, you know, that's hopefully going to be one of our mentors, you know, his name is uh, Dan Locke. And he was talking about how, like, when he wanted his dream car, uh, he would look and he would visualize it every single day. We go, he would drive it. Um, he would, he would feel it. Like he knew all, all the details of it. And by the time he went to the dealership to get it, the salesman was like, "You want to take it for a test drive?" He's like, "Nope." He's like, "You don't want a test? Well, let me give you the specs." He's like, "I don't need to know the specs. I want that car." And he's ready to buy. And the salesman was like, "That was the easiest sell I've ever had in my life." And then when Dan drived off the lot. He, he explained, he's like, there was, everyone kept asking him, like, you know, how does it feel? You achieved your goal. Like, you know, are you excited? He's like, no. And he's like, he felt nothing. He felt no excitement. He's like, that was my car. He knew and believed it ahead of time, like envisioned himself driving it, like test driving it all the time. He would go and, 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 and touch the vehicle. And, and in his mind, he was like, he had the fucking car all along. And that's how he was able to even get it. So he wasn't excited when he achieved it. In his mind, it was like, like, you, you guys don't fucking get it. Like, this was my car from the get-go. Like, it's nothing to be like, you know, woo, I'm excited about it. And if you don't have that type of mentality, like, if you don't have that type of belief system, then it, it's, I think it's really hard for people. So you have to have the mindset right first and, and first believe that whatever it is you want to do is, is possible. Okay, and then second, you have to have at least some kind of money set aside, guys. If you want to shortcut your learning curve and you want to go through the struggles and, 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 and everything, then great. But if you can just take the time and set money aside, find somebody that's doing whatever it is you're interested in. And for God's sakes, just save up and fucking pay them. <laughs> like find like a mentor, <laughs> somebody that that's, can shorten that learning curve. Like don't, don't be one of those people that, I used to be like this all the time where I would like always save a buck. Like I'd be so excited and post like anything with my car uh, or figuring stuff out and going on YouTube and be like, oh, I just saved so much money. Like I could have just paid blah, 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 blah. But I spent time and figured it out. And, and just fucking pay the money and have somebody like show you or, or, or do it for you or, or help you like get to that next level. Like you have or to have buy their course. Mentor. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, if you go to people like, and, and it's hard to get people's time. Yeah. But you can't have this like broke mentality of, um, okay, I want, I want this income and stuff. Like guys, if you're listening to this, let's be real. Every single one of you motherfuckers have an iPhone. You all, you have an Android, like you're buying the new shit all the time. So if you're really serious about starting a business and, but you're not willing to like at least invest into a course or a program or, or just get the skill set or pay somebody that's already been doing it for years to help you, then don't fucking do it. Like seriously, like you're going to, you're going to fail. I don't know how else to say it. Like it's impossible. You just can't do it. If you won't invest into yourself, but you'll buy like all this material bullshit, it's going to be fucking hard. Like, and, and that's really, that's my biggest takeaway on it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, that was awesome. So like, you know, for, and I, I have, we, we kind of talked about this one time, but I, I think it's kind of applies here. It's like, uh, for you gamers out there, it's like, you know, li- life is like a video game, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right. But that, that, you know, it's free to play, right. For you gamers out there, obviously, you know, that there's a games that you can play for free, but then at some point you're going to have to pay money into the game to kind of be the best. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, so applying that exact same logic, 
to, to normal life. You, you can only get so far in life with the free shit. Eventually, you're going to have to pay to play to win. Yep. Exactly. You, <laughs> download download the, the app for free. <laughs> then, you, then you start playing the game. You're like, man, how are everyone leveling up to me? You realize they're buying the 99 cent shit. <laughs> And then you're 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 sitting there. I do it happens to me all the time. You're like playing, 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 and then like you're getting your ass beat. And you're like, man, that's not fair. Like these guys are paying, they're putting a dollar here, twenty dollars here at a time, and they're just leveling up super fast and they're crushing your fucking face. Like, yeah, because you got to pay to play. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> nice analogy. And and speaking of that, you know, like you know, tomorrow is going to be an interesting episode uh, for like kind of like motivational Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be a little bit off topic. Um, you guys will see. You're in for a little treat on uh, shit that we're into. It's going to be very controversial. Uh, most entrepreneurs are going to say that uh, you can't do the things that we're going to mention tomorrow. And we're definitely going to be like, fuck that. And we'll explain why. So definitely excited for our Wednesday talk. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and you know, thanks Wally for sharing the, uh, you know, the, the drug story, you know, kind of give him like a, a inside scoop of what, you know, used to be like, but you know, the skills that are involved and um, you know, hope that was interesting for everybody. And, kind of gives everyone a, an idea of what it takes to start a business. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you on tomorrow's episode.